Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. Big up your damn selves in the building. Make sure you smash up the likes every single damn time and subscribe if you are new. Another video, revaluing every single Chelsea player signed in the Clear Lake Capital era. The new ownership since they came in, every signing we've made, excluding four names. Abamian, Kulabali, Jao Felix, loan fee and Zakaria loan fee because they're not at the club anymore I've taken them out but the players that we still have the accumulated value of those players 931 million point eight million pounds and obviously I'm going to revalue them and then based on my opinion what I've seen potential all of these things what I've you know what I've witnessed I'm going to give the total value of what I think they're now worth. So there's a discrepancy. And um, you do it as well in the comments. Let me know what you disagree and agree with. And it's an interesting exercise for us to play um, on this international break because everybody talks about a billion pound spend. It's probably like a billion euros. Obviously, that figure always gets inflated because it's a higher currency in terms of the, the figure. It looks more eye-catching, more jaw-dropping. But yeah, that's the actual rough figure because obviously the figures can be distorted on different reports. Let's get into it. So Caicedo, 115 million. I think we can all admit that was massively overpriced from the get-go. Um, got into a bidding war with Liverpool we shouldn't have. I think his true value was kind of 80 million. And that's even based upon the season he had at Brighton was incredible. He was wanted by Arsenal in January. Then he was wanted by Liverpool late, but still wanted. And they still put in a British record of 110 million pounds for him. Don't let anybody forget that. Liverpool were ready to pay that money. So... And if we had walked away, they would have gone through that deal. And Tony Bloom said it himself. They were ready to push him that way. That's the direction they wanted Caicedo to go in. So we've overpaid, but people were ready to overpay. I think his true value was 80. And like I said, ha things happened. But he had a borderline team of the year season last year at Brighton. My team of the year was Odegaard. Um, De Bruyne and Rodri in the three man midfield, but Caicedo just missed out. That's how good he was. I'm now putting his value at 70. Might be a bit harsh for some people. Maybe it should be 80, but I do believe he was worth 80 anyway. And that's the fee he should have cost. And then obviously this season's not been as good as last. So I've now just brought it a bit down to 70. He's still 22. He's still young, but he's not going to give you goals. He's not a true anchor, true sitting midfielder. I think he's kind of the box to box defensive minded midfielder. Really good pass range, really good um, scanning and first phase awareness and 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 all of those brilliant builder attributes under De Zerbe, But not a match winner in the sense of, you know, not going to, get you a goal or a key assist potentially, not going to rack up those numbers. So I do think there's a price point that we we shouldn't have to go over for players like this. They're great players. They do important roles, but they're not, you know, attackers and wingers and strikers, I, I think. But, you know, it is what it is. The market's gone mad. I'm going to have them at 70. I think that's a fair price. Um, Lavia at 58 is what he cost. I've brought him down to 55. I still think he's immensely talented. I still think all of the top clubs come in for him on talent alone the injury concerns are definitely definitely there but he's still very young he can still respond and recover from it this is a press resistant very talented technically sound midfielder from Manchester City we already know what their academy can come up with and produce we've seen that in others and I think he would suit Man City you know not as a necessary starter but if he was playing at the level he was playing at Southampton let's not forget this is a player that went to the Emirates had a great performance before he came off then they went and got their goals last season played against Man City at home knocked them out the cup stopped them from doing a quadruple and he was surrounded by scrubs so I'm not forgetting Lavia's qualities and his abilities his injury is a concern um, and his injury you know recent record is a concern but I don't think his valuation should plummet too much because of that because I think the the quality and the potential is still really really high again not a goal scorer not necessarily an anchor we don't know we'll see defensively his awareness what it's like um because he was playing in a two with Ward Prowse he hasn't played much at all this season so he might be similar to Caicedo in terms of that defensive minded but more of a box to box ish player but 55 I'm going to give him in Cuckoo um we paid 51 I've now got him at 50 the injury record is is really concerning you might think why is Lavia more so Nkuku's in his prime like he's 
he's 26. He's going to be 27. And the next thing you know, he's 28. Time flies like that in football. In a couple of years, the, the Lavias will be 24. Still youngish. Like, Linkuku really needs to get a hold of his injury issues now. He had an injury issue last season at Leipzig, missed the World Cup. This season, he's been injured a lot as well. We know the talent. Goes on against Anfield, gets his goal. We know that he can take a free kick. We know he, he could be in that France World Cup squad or Euro squad. But if he doesn't get those injuries sorted soon, he's going to be in his prime, prime 28. And then he's going to be nearly touching 30. So time flies. He's 26. He's in his prime. He's not playing much. It's a concern. I think the injuries would 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 definitely represent that in the fee. Um, but he's a quality player. He is a 60, 65 million pound forward minimum on ability, but we haven't seen it. So... Yeah, and he hasn't got time as on his side as much as others. Um, Palmer, 42 and a half million. I've put it up 70, 70 million now. Um, I'm saying that with chest. I'm saying that with composure, calmness, and I'm correct, right? This kid has been absolutely incredible in a team that has been performing like this in the toxicity or in the, um, the kind of absolute episode that our club is going on right now which is just frenzy and frantic and frustration in the crowds and we're mid-table and the quality around him as Tim Sherwood says is a bit slacking a bit lacking this guy has performed and put the GA up here with some of the best players in the world in his position and in his age category and this is what he's doing in this team so if he was in a top team playing week in week out I mean we already saw it at the start of the season goal in the super cup goal in the community shield immense the eye test the stats it all works and all balances out beautifully the guy is getting goals the guy's getting assists the guy's taking pressure pens which is not easy some people will miss them um and like i said he's not making people for fun loving life on that right hand side and i think 70 mil in this day and age i've seen anthony's and etc go for more he's got a bundle of ability he could go and play in any team that needs a player of his position he could go in there and do a job and start no problem so He's got ridiculous potential. He's still really young. 70 million, easy peasy in the England squad, deserved. Um, De Sassi, 38 million we paid. I'm going to put him down to 30. He's one of those weird players, which he you do gravitate to him. There is a warmth to him. There is a um, personality and a, and a, and a um, potential leader in there. But there's Bozo Gene in there as well. So there's mistakes. There's lobbing goalkeepers. There's getting danced around by Mateta on the flanks on the, in the Palace game. So I don't want to... And, and obviously he's not the youngest. He's one of the most experienced players in the squad. So his, that's not going to help him. So I think 30 is 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 reasonable. Maybe it should be 35 for some people, but I, I wouldn't go past that personally on the valuation of De Sassi. He's not great in wide areas. He's not the quickest, but, you know, he does try to put a, put a, a foot in there. He's, it, it's, his best attributes are heading the ball away, his, his kind of aerial dominance, defending the box. He puts in a man in the match performance against Man City. But then, like I said, he can have a bozo moment. So good defender. Um, depending on the way the team is needing to set up. Is there going to be a high line? Is it going to be expansive? He's a good passer of the ball. I think his passing has gone under the radar. So there's some really nice traits there to be put together. He could be the French Ivanovic. He could not be. We'll see. Give him a bit more time, but I'm going to leave him at 30. Jackson paid 32. I'm definitely putting him at 40 now. His value's definitely gone up for me. He's got attributes that people would appreciate in a top team. He's got attributes that a false nine would be gift, you know, given that tag a couple of years ago. The Gabriel Jesus is at Man City. Even <clears throat> I've seen Cody Gakpo's getting away with murder in comparison to Jackson. But because he plays in a in a, in a mid-table team, the, the obviously that team needs goals. So you're going to be judged on it. As strikers should be, but he shouldn't be. Dis disregarded as some bum. The guy's got technical quality. The guy links up the play, holds up the play. Upper body strength is there to battle defenders. Gave Konate a tough game, which he's a great player, Konate. Look what he look what he caused him problems before he came off in the cup final. Runs the channels, assists, has the awareness to set up others, makes great run. Like he's a hard worker. Like he actually has everything outside of the finishing. And, and don't get me wrong, the finishing is the most important, but in a top team where goals are coming from the flanks and there's goal scoring wingers and the team is just winning. So people are not going to be on your case as much. And the fee, like I said, isn't 70, isn't 80, isn't 90 for a striker. It's a humble 32. I'm giving him 40 because if you actually watch the player, he's very good. And he can definitely do a job as a second striker or a winger if he didn't work out as a striker. But he's still developing. He can only get better and he doesn't need motivation anymore. He's deleted Snapchat. So it's a long day. Um... Sanchez, 24 million, now at 15 for me. The optics are awful. You've gone you've gone from Brighton third choice goalkeeper to coming to Chelsea with your goalkeeping coach, making the number one shirt and then losing it 
to Petrovic, obviously for injury, but now you can't really get that shirt back. And every time you play, not going to lie to you, you scare the absolute living daylights out of me. There's an error in you. There's a, there's a, there's a moment there. I think his ball playing ability is sometimes overstated. Long passing can go out into touch. Yes, he can play a line breaker, but I'm not taking all that for the calams, for the potential, you know, um, mistakes and errors. So for me, optics are awful. You've been benched, displaced twice now in a, two consecutive clubs. Um, and yeah, just, I don't think any top team's coming for you. So any team that needs you is either your second choice at a top team or your first choice at a mid, lower, lower mid table team. And that 15 million is all they're going to pay for you, in my opinion. Um, and that's what you was actually worth. I, I, I said at the time we overpaid and we were trying to sweeten the Caicedo deal. That didn't even work. So I, I think we overpaid anyway. Um, Okotraku, 23 million to 20. Still young, French, young, box-to-box -box potential defensive midfielder. I think the French market would still take him. I do believe he's got talent, but we haven't seen a lot of it because he's injured. But I don't want to just make his value fall through the floorboards because there is potential there. Like when he did get his little glimpses and opportunities for Chelsea, he actually did play very well. There's actually some games where we were awful like Newcastle. He's one of the few players that could leave the pitch with any sort of respect. It's just the injury um, situation, which everybody has here. So I think 20, 3 million drop. Um, Washington, 17. I put him now at 12. Then I have a 5 million loss there. He was, could have been starting for Santos this season. We took him and we've done nothing with him. He's under 21s and he's not gotten a single shot in the first team should have gone out on loan and actually at least given him an opportunity or just give him a chance off the bench at Chelsea when we've had one striker um, and, and not had two goalkeepers on the bench. But hey, um, guess we've done, we're done developing. We've got enough development um, players as it is. I don't want to drop the value too much because he's still young and, you know, most teams will take a gamble on a kid that is talented, has shown something um, back in Brazil, albeit. But yeah, 12 million. I, I'm probably being generous. It could even drop to 10, um, to be honest, that one. Yeah, or even maybe a little bit lower, but... I'm going to leave it at 12 just for the sake of um, the figures that I've calculated. <laughs> Angelo, 13 to 15. Good at Strasbourg. Needs to add goals to his game for sure. Obviously, assists will come with better forwards. Um, very, very technically sound player. That balances out maybe the Washington one because he could be worth, say, 17 million. Washington worth 10. So the 2 million either way just balances itself out. I'm pretty happy to just give that as the, as the figures. Um, Pochetti, uh, Pochettino, we ain't going to talk about your value. Uh, Pe Petrovic, 14. I'm putting him at 25. Um, he's come in. He's done a great job in terms of he's been solid. Ball playing ability, yes, that needs to be improved. Be braver. But I also like the fact that he knows that he can't play those passes. So instead of playing them and giving away the ball and costing us goals, he just gives it a lob, gives it a clear. And then Jackson can try and win it or whoever. Like if we etch, this is the thing with Petrovic. <clears throat> the way modern football's gone, everybody feels like we have to play out from the back at all times, which is not correct in my opinion. You play it when you can. And if you can't, you don't because you don't want to concede goals from stupid positions which he hasn't and he won't. So I, I I admire the intelligence and the IQ. I admire the shot stopping and doing your job. The actual more pressing thing for me is claiming crosses from your box, like the Courtoises and the Czechs, which I'm used to, but he's young. So hopefully, you know, he develops that. If we had a target man, if we had a physical striker up front who could hold up the ball, Didier Drogba, um, those long clearances would be passes and the pass completion would be higher. Suddenly, it would be making more sense. Because we've not had that too much, Jackson's only just starting to get into his body and, and hold it up. Those clearances don't go anywhere because no one can hold the ball up because it's all, you know, young, you know, fragile forwards up there, Sterlings and, and whatnot, who so can't do that. So it, it's yin and yang. It's, uh, you know, two to tango. So for me... I'm happy with him. I've said it from get-go since he's coming to the team. He's deserved to stay in the team. Don't really want to see Sanchez. And he's still 24, so doesn't peak until 30. And the big thing for me, for him, he's just come from the MLS. It's his first season at the top level in a top league. And he's performing like this. So the trajectory should be like that. Even though Sanchez is only one year older, Sanchez has been in the Premier League much longer, more experienced at this level. And he's been displaced twice now. So that's the difference for me. Um... Enzo 106. I'm going to now put him down at 70. I've got him with Caicedo. I think him and Caicedo can be two of him and Caicedo can be two of the, the top midfielders out there in the world. You know, in terms, they can be in that top, top world class category. They've definitely got the potential for it. No doubt about it. Enzo's passing range last season, even under Potter, we saw it outside the right boot, round the corners, over the top, perfectly weighted, perfectly placed. His passing range. He can do that in any team in the world and they'll be more than happy with that. He is in the top echelons of passing. Progressive passing, long-range passing. 
You know, he is in the top echelons of it, in my opinion. <clears throat> we might not see it enough. That's a different conversation. But does he have the ability to do it? 100%. Now, my pressing pressing issue is obviously, like I said, if you're going to cost a lot of money as a midfielder, we're talking about 100 million, you've got to get goals. Even Declan Rice is getting some goals, taking some corners, getting some assists from those set pieces. The GA is needed when you're talking 100 million for a midfielder. I don't think DMs should be costing 100 million. I don't think, like deep line playmakers. Now, obviously we could talk about the greats of the game, but he's not a great at the game yet. So that will have to come in time and the respect will come if he does that level shit at a Real Madrid or Barcelona, which I think he's capable of. But right now, I'm going to got him at 70. It's been a difficult season. Some of it's down to the manager playing him as a false nine or second striker, 10 hold up play shit like that. However, you want to see more control, more dictating. So I'm balancing it out. I put, I put him at 70. He's definitely capable of at 80, but I don't want to go too far. Um, Fofana, Wesley Fofana, 70, down to 40. Two back-to-back -back bombastic injuries, massive injuries. Um, yeah, that's a high potential defender. One of the best young defenders in the league when he was at Leicester in his debut season from at St. Etienne. Man the match in the cup final against us with the Tielemans goal. Unbelievable talent. Recovery pace, good in wide areas, can head the ball, can pass the ball. What more do you want? Ground, air, quick, you know, not breath. It's such a shame. But those injuries are going to make your value drop to 40, I'm afraid, because it's a massive concern for every club in Europe, including ours. No one can pretend it's not. Like, we actually don't know what way you're coming back, like what, what shape. The reason why I still, like, near 40 is because the talent, the actual potential is still so high. If he comes back in a decent way and can get back to that level, then you're still really, really excited. Um, but if he doesn't and he gets another injury again, then this is going to drop to like 30, 25, you know. So I'm holding out hope. That might be generous, but I'm holding out hope. Mudrick 62, that's now 35. And like I said, we always overpaid for him, in my opinion. He's raw, he's rough, he's rugged, he's got talent, but it's very much needs refining. Um, good carrier of the ball, got a lot of pace, got a shot on him. Not an incredible crosser. Not an inc He's good, nice little reverse pass on him. Um, but yeah, a lot to work on, a lot to learn. And like I said, he's not worth 62 million because 62 million is like you're handling business week in, week out. Now, to be fair to him, he's not being given the opportunity to handle business week in, week out because I don't think he would if he was given the opportunity. I think he'd be inconsistent. And to be honest, because Sterling's inconsistent, we may as well see it see it from you now. We may as well see your inconsistencies. But there's still a lot to learn. There's still a lot of things that he needs to refine in his game. The the the, the kind of game intelligence, the, the finer margins of making the run at the right time, coming short at the right time. Um, his dribbling ability is not brilliant is close control in terms of in comparison to Madaweke I think his dribbling ability is far far surpassed um Madrick and he's younger so yeah there's some things but there's you know it, it's a very dangerous um acquisition it's a very very dangerous um uh, deal but we'll, we'll see how it goes um 35 million I think is fair uh Cook Rea, 62 I've dropped him to 30 again Man City liked him. They wanted him. Good player. Not a great player. Not great going forward. Not great at crossing. Not great at shooting. Not that that's necessary, but modern day fullback. Not insane. Not even an insane passer. Good passer. Defending. Yeah, you can make an error. I probably am being generous with this, especially with your wages. <clears throat> your defending sometimes is really good. Like you put the work in, the due diligence against Dortmund at home in the Champions League in the back three. Beautiful performance. But then he could step out and leave loads of space in behind him and have a bozo moment with the positioning. So 30 million, <clears throat> I think that's fair. He's not worth 62. We established that. Um, he's not even really worth 50 for me. He's a 30 to 40. And that's kind of where he's at. I'm going to put him at 30. Um, Sterling, I'm going to put at 30 from 50. Again, high, high wages. You're not in your prime. You're only going to decline um, and yeah, it's just a respect to not put you any lower because I don't want to just go on a madness because right now you're not the flavor of the month. Um, you have quality, like it's clear you can produce moments of quality, but you're also extremely frustrated and you sometimes play the game. You play the game sometimes like a, like a 16, <laughs> like a, like an 18 year old sometimes. 
the decision making, the, the the lack of awareness to see your teammates, or just selfishness. I don't know what it is, but it's pissing me off. So thirty million on those wages would be mad because your wages are ridiculous. Three hundred k a week. There's not many clubs that, if any, that can really afford or would want to pay you that. Saudi. Um, but I don't want to go into 25s and 20s because he's still an England international. I know he's not in the recent squad, but he's still got that name around him where you know he, what he can deliver. It's just that he's extremely inconsistent. I don't want to get disrespectful. Um, Badia Shill, 35. I've left him at 35. I just think I don't want to remember the Badia Shill after the injury where he was rusty and rugged and he was making mistakes and positioning against Newcastle and weird tackles. I'm just going to just say that the Badia Shield that first came in, the calm, composed Iceman um, was really impressive. And if he can just get back to that level, then he's definitely 35 at a minimum. So I'm balancing it out. You started really well where I didn't even have to question you. I didn't even have to worry about you. You were just cold. You were composed. You were like, just ignore him because he's just that good airily, on the ball, passing through the lines, just recovery, everything was just good. So don't worry about that, brother. But then he's going to have a little couple of months of shakiness. So I'm going to leave him at 35. So I do think there's a lot um, more to come from him. Haven't given up. Madaweke, I've got at 35, given him the same price tag as Modric. He's got some things about him. He's got a goal in him. He's got a lovely shot on him. Right foot against Bournemouth, left foot against Leicester. However, there's still a lot to learn. The dribbling ability is nice. The passing could be better as well. But he's kind of, you know, he's trying to improve, but it's gonna, we're going to need to see some consistency. Is he going to get those consistent minutes here? Probably not, because Palmer's absolutely balling out on that right-hand side. What you need is probably, most likely, a transfer to a team that is lower, not lower, because we're quite low, less pressure, who can give you minutes consistently, and then you can actually bring that price tag up, because you can't really do that with 20-minute cameos off the bench. So I do feel for him, because Palmer's just too good. Um, Gusto, 26 million to 50 50 is me like being nice and just calming myself down because this is one of the best up and coming right backs on the planet. 20 years old in his debut Premier League season. And if he wasn't at mid table Chelsea and he was doing this in a team that everybody had their eyes on, like an Arsenal or a Man City or a Liverpool, everybody would be absolutely. Listen, people would be going off. Yeah. People would be going on. Yeah. All the switches. This kid. He's complete. You might have a jittery moment, a jittery game, lose touches, but in terms of watching him week in, week out on a regular and seeing him in person as well, he can do it all. He's clean on the ball. He can cross. He can get forward. He's got an engine. He defends really well. He's a complete right back. Um, and he's only 20 years old. You hear me? 20. And you know France are going to have him in that squad soon. Um, and you know, if, if not already, and you know France are going to have him starting at right back soon. And that's only going to push that valuation up when he's winning you know, international trophies with Mbappe and all these brothers. So it's 50 million, yeah? It's double. The price, yesterday's price is not today's price. Um, Santos, I've got 20 million from the 18. I've actually brought it up and that's probably wrong, but I rate him. I really rate him. I know he's not played at Strasbourg much and he's played one game and the Strasbourg fans really like him. It was a really good performance. He's not played at all, at all at Nottingham Forest, which was politics because they had about five other more senior midfielders ahead of him. And Cooper came out and said, there's no point in me playing him because he's not ours. So that's politics. Every time this kid gets an opportunity and every time I get to see a glimpse of him, he impresses me. Under 20 World Cup for Brazil, impresses. Chelsea preseason, impresses. One little game there for Strasbourg, impresses. This kid has talent. I've seen it before with Billy Gilmore when a kid doesn't get his chance because he's too short or he's this or he's that and he's not what the manager likes quite. I don't give a damn. I know that brother is talented. So I'm going to give him his 20. Um, and I think when Barcelona are coming in for you, when we've just signed you in the same summer, Barcelona are coming in, in you know, last season and they want you. Yeah, that means that there's something going on. Like, you ain't no scrub. Um, Stelina, 12 million to 15, having a good loan in Belgium. He's still a young keeper. Haven't really seen much, but good reports. Datra Fafana, 10.2 to 15, getting goals at Burnley in a very shit team and actually delivering very impressive. Um, the Union Berlin loan was a bit shaky, but I think I think if a Premier League team could take him next year after what he's done at Burnley in this spell, and I think he'll continue to do if he gets the, the chances in front of goal, um, I think people will, will go for him. So I'm going to give him a little rise. Carnage of Komeka, I'm going 20 to 25 again. Loads of injuries, but I just can't deny the talent. I cannot deny, and he's still really young. Under 21s for England. 
Obviously, like I said, not liking Cuckoo where he's 26 and in his prime, so there's a bit more pressure to hire up and get yourself sorted. Carney Chukameka is still really young. He could have actually been at Aston Villa playing with the Jacob Ramseys and the McGinns and the Baileys and the Di Diabys and Watkins. He'd easily be playing with that team and, and fitting in well. He's a very talented player. I think he's gone under the radar because he's so injury prone or he's had, not injury prone, he's had injuries. But when you actually watch him, West Ham, Leicester again, wow. The, the kid can can contribute. Dribbling ability, close control. He's got a goal in him, we're seeing. Um, just a really nice 10. And a modern day 10, because if he's a box to box as he says he is, then he's going to get back and help too. I really like the player. I think he's actually the most well-rounded 10 that we actually have in terms of what he could potentially give us defensively, just getting back in midfield. And then of course, the fact that he can operate in the tight spaces and he can give a goal. So yeah, 25. <laughs> Could, could be a potential 40, 50 million pound player easily, but hold your horses 25 because he's injury stricken. That comes to a total of 799 million. We've gone from 931, which is what they cost, to 799. That's the total. That's the tally. That's what I'm going with. You give me your thoughts in the comments down below with your numbers, your figures, your calculations, your mathematics. And let me know how much money we've lost because we definitely haven't gained. <laughs> we definitely haven't gained. Um, but yeah, that was a fun little exercise. Big up your damn selves. Listen, guys, make sure you smash up the likes every single damn time. I'll see you guys for the next video. Big up your damn selves in a bit, people. Peace.